Welcome to Talking Hope, breakthrough conversations about preventing, treating, and curing cancer. Brought to you by City of Hope, an NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. Hope lives here in Orange County. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Talking Hope. I'm Darren Godden, and I'm pleased to be speaking with Amy Trong, City of Hope's first acupuncturist oncologist. Dr. Trong brings extensive knowledge in both public health and traditional Chinese medicine. She holds a master's and a doctorate in traditional Chinese medicine and a master's degree in public health with a focus on health policy and management. Today, we want to better understand the benefits of acupuncture for patients with cancer. So Dr. Trong, thank you so much for joining us on Talking Hope today. Thank you so much, Darren, for inviting me to be on this show. I'm very excited to be here and looking forward to our conversation today. Well, I think you have such an incredible and unique background. So why don't you start with telling us what drew you to this field and what brought you specifically to City of Hope? I think that's a great question because acupuncture and Chinese medicine was not quite on my radar. I've always was more on the Western medicine side. My background was more on the biomedical side. I studied biochem at UCLA for undergrad, did a lot of uh, biomedical research prior to my encounter of traditional Chinese medicine. And it kind of happens when I was doing research at Stanford, looking at uh, gene interactions between uh, cancer care, or excuse me, breast cancer and, and DeGeorge syndrome. And one of the projects I was on was actually looking at hearing loss and kidney disease. And the gene that we were looking at particularly was contributing to the fact that there might be a relationship I didn't quite understand how that could be. I was actually in a seminar uh, learning a little bit more about Chinese medicine in which they talked about um, hearing loss or excuse me, the ears as well as the kidneys. And, and that to me kind of kind of sparked an interest in me in, in like, hmm. oh, well, maybe there's something more about this Chinese medicine thing or acupuncture that we could actually capitalize on in terms of improving general health care for everyone. So that kind of embarked my interest. And then I started going into it year after year, clinic after clinic, patient after patient. I started seeing some of these benefits and it just drew me into the field itself. Specifically to oncology and specific to City of Hope, I think one of the things that is greatly valuable to me is uh, life in general. And I think everybody deserves to live a high quality of life. Doesn't matter what type of disease you might have. Mm -hmm. City of Hope particularly, in my opinion, has been very strong in terms of our values, our mission. And I think that alignment between me and what I want to be an individual who is contributing to the betterment of society, it just made sense for me to join City of Hope. So I'm extremely thrilled and excited to be a part of this pioneering group of people who are developing integrative oncology for City of Hope. Awesome. Well, you certainly are pioneering it here at City of Hope, Orange County, and we, we couldn't be more blessed to have you. So um, let, let me let me ask you a couple questions because there's a lot of confusion probably around acupuncture. So what exactly is it? How does it work? And what are the common methods that you use? That's a great question. And you're right. There's a lot of confusion. So acupuncture itself is actually a therapeutic component of what is called traditional Chinese medicine or TCM, which you might see a lot in papers and whatnot. So acupuncture is this particular modality that utilizes uh, thin single use needles. You put it in certain points on the body and it causes a therapeutic effect. The question then is how does it cause a therapeutic effect? It was popularized in the United States, I think in the in the 70s and studies started to emerge. And one of the landmark studies kind of talked about how the application of acupuncture actually induces our body to release some of these, um, I call it neuroendocrine sort of uh, substances. Just to make it simple, it's just certain substances that make your body feel good. So this is kind of going into the pain management world and that how mm -hmm. became uh, how acupuncture became so popular is just the pain management side of things. There's also studies that talks about the release of endorphins and serotonin, which is another type of hormone that kind of helps your body feel good, the sense of well-being and happy. So if we were to bring it down, it's just basically working on the neural pathway, which is how our body communicate with our brain and vice versa. So walk us through what a typical acupuncture treatment would look like from the time a new patient comes to you. What do you do? How long is that treatment? What, what does that treatment look like? 
Yeah, I think it's important for us to differentiate between what we do here at the Cancer Center compared to what the community does. So in the community, the scope of practice for acupuncture and Chinese medicine is pretty wide in, in which you can do a lot of things like herbal consults and, what, and whatnot. Here at the Cancer Center, the way that it works is that the uh, we, we have this very established collaborative sort of model where we work with other physicians and other care providers. So we get a referral in from a physician. And um, from there, the patient comes in. Prior to that, I usually scan their notes to make sure that their labs look okay. For example, their blood counts are, are healthy. They, they don't have any contraindications of utilizing acupuncture. And then what happens is once they come in, I walk them through the process of what acupuncture is. So it starts with an education piece because most of our patients may not have had access to it before. So the conversation starts out with an initial intake of the patient's history getting a general idea of why is it that they're coming in to get acupuncture, even though we have a plethora of other sort of interventions that they could, they could utilize. From there, seeking out what the patient wants and what the patient needs is kind of the core principle of what I do and also what City of Hope is about in terms of patient-centric care. And then from there, I take their I take their pulse, I look at their tongue, I kind of give an assessment in terms of um, what's going on inside of them and taking it from a TCM perspective, then I analyze in terms of which particular pathway that is being affected. And then that's when I let the patient know whether it is that I am going to choose specific points on their body and then whether or not I'm going to do regular acupuncture or am I going to do electro acupuncture? Am I going to use points on their ear, their hands, their feet, and which areas? All of those things are being communicated with the patients prior to the actual application. Thereafter, the patient rests for about 30 minutes or so. The intake itself can take a little bit longer depending on the patient. But the patient is resting with the needles. They generally fall asleep. They rest. They relax. Try not to move, obviously, because you got mm -hmm. needles on you or in you. And then afterwards, um, we come back in, take out the needles, and then we reevaluate to see how the patient is feeling post-treatment. And then that kind of gives me an idea of how to do the treatment planning for their future visits and so on. Oh, very, very interesting. I, I, I just learned a ton right, right there myself. So have never had it, but I've heard people talk about it. I'm sure a lot of our listeners are learning a lot to, as well. Um, how often would a patient receive this type of treatment or how long would a normal treatment plan go for? Great question. Again, I think it really depends on the patient and it depends on the issue. So if you think about an individual, say, in survivorship, no more, they don't have the cancer in them anymore, per se, uh, or active treatments. And now they are they went and played basketball and, and got a sore neck or a, a swollen ankle or something like that. And so they exhibit pain. For those type of patients, treatments can be very quick. It could probably just take one or two treatments. For patients who are on active treatments or um, having a lot of other comorbidities, I think it would take a little bit longer. It could go anywhere from four to six visits before they could see a significant difference. And then the ongoing process of it could actually continue to go on, but it really depends on how the patient progresses. So the treatment plan actually adjusts, but if you were to ask me to give a blanket statement, usually I would tell people that it takes about four to six visits before they could see a significant difference. Okay. So let's get to the heart of this as we talk about patients with cancer. Um, we know that acupuncture is relatively new, right, in the field of oncology treatment. Um, what do you see as the opportunities for acupuncture to benefit patients who specifically are going through active cancer treatment? So the American Society of Clinical Oncology and the Society of Integrative Oncology are very big professional organizations focused on oncology. And those two organizations are very strong in terms of going into the research to look at the evidence and the literature to see what and how can acupuncture be applied to the, um, to the patient's care journey. From the studies and what is seen in literature and research, Pain management, nausea and vomiting is at the highest level in terms of efficacy for the patient. Moderate efficacy of utilizing acupuncture is stuff for like an anxiety, for fatigue, 
for hot flashes, both in men and women. And then there's also emerging studies now that are showing it's beneficial for dry mouth, sleep issues, insomnia, tingling mm. and numbness that is associated with chemotherapy, for example. But then there's also tingling and numbness in patients with diabetes as well. And as you know, City of Hope also works with that group of uh, population. And then there's also um, other studies that talks about constipation and headaches and whatnot. Interesting. So I know acupuncture oncology is a key part of City of Hope's, uh, we'll call it the first of its kind national integrative oncology model, right? Our program that's bringing together Eastern medicine, Western medicine, um, and those treatments that are are making a difference for patients. So um, this is truly something that's different and unique for the Orange County patient, because as far as we know, we are the first to really integrate it into active oncology treatment, which is a, an awesome thing for patients to have under one roof, right? Um, so what, what, what sort of things excite you about the integration of acupuncture and uh, this sort of treatment into supportive care and integrative medicine? Wow, that's, um, that's I have so much to say to that. <laughs> Please, I want to hear um, it. <laughs> I think to start, um, what you had shared about how this is kind of like the pivotal part of integrative oncology, we've never really integrated acupuncture in oncology care before. I think that's important for us to also highlight that other health centers um, or health systems offer acupuncture. But I think the key differentiation between us, City of Hope in particular, is the fact that we really are working together collaboratively with one another as a whole care team. And I think the most exciting part of, of all of this is really, first of all, I want to thank the Chern family to, to develop the Chern Family Center for Integrative Oncology to allow us to really dive into the research, having the clinical trials that are necessary for us to optimize and ensure that we are now going to um, elevate the, the entire integrative oncology field so that we can give the patient the access that they need in a way that is evidence-based as well as um, effective to the patient. You mentioned clinical trials. Do you, do you foresee some clinical trials being um, brought forth uh, from here in Orange County uh, around acupuncture and, and supportive care and integrative care? Yeah, absolutely. So currently I'm working, I'm part of the research team at Orange County. And what we're looking at or the protocol I'm working on is the application of acupuncture and how it is working in the um, development of anxiety or how do we treat the anxiety patients. So that is something that is in the works. And I do foresee it being part of our bigger bigger vision or, or, or objective of trying to making sure that we're educating our population, our physicians, as well as um, the endeavors within the scientific community. Hmm. You mentioned anxiety. I know you're not referring to this type of anxiety, but I think I would be re remiss not to ask the question. Um, what about people who have a fear of needles? W what do you suggest when you talk about acupuncture, what do you suggest for that person who says, I'm afraid of needles? <laughs> so acupuncture, as I mentioned, is one of the modalities within traditional Chinese medicine. There's ad ad adjunct therapies in addition to acupuncture as well that we also practice. This. Things like acupressure, you also have um, cupping, gua sha, or scraping as well. So when a patient comes in, while the needle component is, is what means acupuncture, but the, the combination of those other therapies could also be utilized as an intro kind of um, I don't want to say it's a gate, uh, what is it called? Um, it's like a gateway towards their, their involvement of it. Okay. Sometimes I also think that the fear of needles also comes down to um, not having enough trust, right? There's a fear of the provider messing up or doing something. So I think one of the key things that I always advise patients, whether it's providers who are referring patients or patients referring patients, is to let them know to just show up and have a conversation or get to know the provider. And I think one of the key takeaways from, from all of that is really to, to look into who is it that's doing it and then developing that sort of rapport. And I think over time, you start to develop that trust and then that allows the patient to be more open to utilizing ac or utilizing the actual needles for the acupuncture treatment. Great, thank you for that. So we ask this question of every guest on the show. So what does hope or the concept of the concept of hope really mean to you? 
You know, I actually thought about this and I thought about this for a long time because I think it's such a powerful word that it is for me to just say one thing, it might not be good, but I think the best way that I can think about this is hope to me is the embodiment of remaining joyful and comfortable in the face of the unknown. Hmm. Well, that really ties back to what you said at the beginning, right? Of wanting to have people have this quality of life, right? whether they're going through a cancer treatment or, or something else. So um, that, that really ties into what you're doing. So that, that's, that's um, thank you for sharing that. Um, what is your message for our listeners today? Uh, if you if you had, you've already had some moments to share, but what is the message that you would share with people when they ask you what you do? Um, what is that message that you share that you want them to take away? I would say that in relation to acupuncture and the bigger picture of acupuncture in oncology care is that the the service I provide is not just one thing, meaning it's not just Eastern medicine. It's really truly an integrative approach in which it is applied towards the Western component of how we're also um, offering the care to the patient. So it's not really siloed in any way. And I think at the end of the day, one of the things I want to let the patients know is that they do have options. They the, the, the fact that we're doing this development of this integrative oncology program at City of Hope is a pivotal example of these advances that we're doing towards evidence-based treatments. So they themselves don't need to worry so much in terms of, okay, is this, is this particular practice something that we would really want to incorporate in our care? The answer is it's already integrated into, into our system here here at City of Hope. So I think the other thing I also want to mention is just to consider your clinical team as your support system and mm -hmm. to reach out, whether it is to your supportive care providers and your integrative medicine providers to really help you answer any of the questions or concerns that you might have. So if you are in treatment at City of Hope, City of Hope, Orange County, your doctors are going to know that this is available. They're likely to recommend it to you if you might be a good uh, candidate for that, right? Um, or if they don't, you can you can ask for that right. referral to that care. What about folks who are not part of City of Hope, but are going through cancer treatment or cancer journeys right now, and they are thinking as they hear you, I, I would like to try this. I would like to access this, even if it's not here at City of Hope. What do you what do you recommend? Who should they do they tell that to their main oncologist? Who who do they talk to about accessing this type of care? Yeah, I think in terms of coordination of care, well, first, I, I would probably recommend them to get a second opinion at City of Hope and then go from there. But I think the the other way to approach it, if they don't have access to City of Hope, is to talk to their medical provider. And hopefully the provider would also be able to um, give them some sort of references. But if not, I'm also very open to helping the community. So if that becomes a question and if it's allowable, I'm more than happy to connect the patient to any sort of community acupuncturist of whom I have in contact with. Oh, that's very, very kind of you. Well, well, thank you so much for your time today. I think this has been really um, enlightening and helpful for a lot of folks. And I'm really excited about uh, where this next step is, uh, where this next part of our journey as City of Hope is going to take us with integrative care and integrative medicine. Um, you mentioned the Chern family and, and the establishment of the new center. Uh, we're very excited about that. And I know you're a part of that. So um, thank you so much for sharing of your expertise today and, and, and spending some time with us. We really appreciate it. Many thanks to you too, Darren, and also to the City of Hope team. Well, thank you, Dr. Trong. And um, thank you all for joining us today. We really appreciate you listening to the podcast. Be sure to share it, be sure to like it, and be sure to join us on our next episode. We'll see you next time. Thank you all for listening to Talking Hope, where breakthrough conversations about preventing, treating, and curing cancer have been brought to you by City of Hope an NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. This is the hope you've been waiting for. For more information, visit cityofhope.org forward slash OC or make an appointment at any of City of Hope's five Orange County locations, including City of Hope Orange County Lennar Foundation Cancer Center, the most advanced cancer treatment center in Orange County. Call 888-333-4673. That's 888-333-4673. H-O-P-E.